It's time, it's episode 97 of the ATM podcast. Our man Mark Watson is in Paris at the moment for the Paralympics. We'll talk all about that. Co or Carrington for the Supreme Helberg Award? Is it now it's just a shootout between those two? Are you going to be watching the All Blacks box, Mark? Can you get in front of a TV for that? The Premier League, if we've got time. Apologise to me! Gay party, mate. How, how is it? It's good. It's good. It's always a long flight, isn't it, Martin? You've done this yourself, only for the World Cup last year, so it's always that jet lag. You're sort of shattered by 6 o'clock at night, and then you wake up at 2 a.m., and you yes. can't get back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in a media village, so it's the first time I've actually been to you know the Olympics or Paralympics where I've actually had to stay in a media village. And so that's been interesting, um, but met a couple of really good um, British and Canadian commentators today. Uh, both over here doing table tennis, ironically, and uh, yeah, we had a really nice day just out and catching up. And it was first, you know, first time in three days where really I sort of felt like I was in Paris. So, you know, we have um, big sort of uh, broadcasting meetings, um, yeah, later today or tomorrow French time, I guess. And yeah, then things do kick off, and then you know you don't get so much time to look around Paris. So you sort of got to try and do it early, or you tend to miss out. Well, Notre Dame, how spectacular is that little bit along the Seine there where, you know, you get that, you see the Eiffel Tower in the distance, you got you got the uh, the, the La Louvre and, and all of those old buildings. It just feels like, I don't know, when I was walking around there, just I've, 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 you feel ancient, you feel like, you've, you know, there's been hundreds of years of history here. And that's the main thing I get when I'm overseas in Europe. It's just something that we miss out on in New Zealand because we just don't have that dating back. Yeah, oh, oh, look, I think there's a big difference between driving through Narra Wahoo and um, places, <laughs> yeah. you know, places like Huntley and Hamilton to sort of Paris, and you just yeah. see these this most spectacular architecture, and you know, as you say, just the history, and um, it's just got this grandness about it, doesn't it? And there's such a romance about the city of Paris. There genuinely is with the cafes and the and the statues and these famous landmarks that we've all heard of but maybe we haven't all seen and been around and the proximity of it all and we actually found this lovely little bar and they're actually serving pints of beer for three euro which is just unheard of um we'd been to a a little pub earlier today we went and checked out the table tennis facilities and stuff with some of the commentators doing it and you know we actually ended up i don't know we ended up getting basically i think we were paying about 20 it almost felt like we were paying 20 dollars for a beer there so um yeah just just uh, yeah it's just the one thing new zealand doesn't have we just don't have that history do we but we should have the beauty apologize to me the paralympics then what can we expect because once you've kind of just had the olympics and it's it's you know it, it feels like wow you know you soaked all that up for two weeks and it was non-stop and things and then you take a breath and now we get the paralympics we're going to get a hell of a lot of medals and things just tell us a couple of the stories that you're looking forward to the most Oh, look, that, there's just always the story, isn't there? There's always the story. And we sort of, as commentators, you know, like, what story can you tell? If they've written it down in their bio, we can tell it. So you can might talk about how they picked up their particular injuries, um, the level of impairment. Uh, were they born with that impairment? Did it come as the result of an accident? Uh, did it possibly happen in combat? And so there's always those stories. I think I think the thing that appeals to me is that, just the way these athletes have to adapt to be able to play their chosen sport at the highest level. Uh, I mean, there's the Egyptian with no arms who plays table tennis with his table tennis bat in his mouth. He's also a very good golfer by all accounts. He even plays a pretty mean game of pool in terms of he's had to learn to just, you know, carry the cue basically between his chin and his shoulder. If, 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 to, to give you an example of it. And I think that's the thing in swimming. You know, swimming's a sport that, is governed by good technique and when you maybe don't have complete body, bodily function you've got to learn to adapt okay how do i maximize my hydrodynamics how do i um, get my distance per stroke how do i get that propulsion what 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 in and they've got to call upon you know whatever physical um, attributes they do have to try and um, make up for what they don't have and, and you know and I, I think that's the thing and it's only like even just walking around the table tennis I was there when they were practicing and just watching some of the rallies and watching some of these athletes up close that you know are missing arms missing limbs and stuff and you do just sit there and go wow and, and look it's easy I guess at times it's, there, I, I, there, look I think there are some athletes who I do think take the mickey a little bit out of it where you do wonder whether their impairment is actually 
really affecting their ability to play that particular sport. Um, but they're probably the exception to the rule, not the rule. And you think, oh, hey, what, you know, what are you guys actually doing here competing? I, uh, you know, you probably could participate in just sort of able-bodied sport and be probably pretty competitive. But yeah, generally, uh, I mean, I, I think it's only if you, I think it's when you only, if, if you have found yourself in a situation where you ended up being disabled or you know a family friend that does, it does give you a real sense of self-worth. It does give you that opportunity to strive. Apologise to me! All right, let's look at Coe versus Carrington then, mate, um, for the Supreme Helberg Award. Is it a straight shootout between these two? Yeah, look, at, uh, yeah, look, I, I, look, I think Lydia Ko is now the front runner without doubt. She's just won the British Open and women's golf, and I think there's an awful lot of depth in it. You know, the reason why there's so much depth in golf is you've heard me famously say in the past it is because it's there's a real high level of enjoyment. It's not a sport that requires a lot of like real physical hurt, like you get running a marathon or you're doing repetitions on a running track or the level of pain that you're going to get with kayaking. So for those reasons, it's, it's, it's a very, very big sport internationally. But winning the Olympic Games gold and women's golf and then winning the British Open or the Open Championship, I think probably gives her the edge. Uh, Carrington, three gold medals, but you know only the one individual medal, um, but still comes away with three. Uh, you know, how much weight he's still got a lot. You, you know, you're only as good as depth in your program. Um, and she's benefited from that. She's probably been the reason why we do have depth in the program. So, look, I, I definitely think that Lydia Ko wins the Sportswoman of the Year. I think Hamish Kerr wins Sportsman of the Year. But I still reckon, in terms of what was the best gold medal we won at the Games, Hamish Kerr, without a doubt. I think that is just such a blue ribbon event. Just such a difficult one. No history in the sport. He's had to do it on his own. He's basically been a pioneer in this country for really taking high jump and popularising it and taking on the Cubans and the Eastern Europeans and the Canadians and those countries that have dominated it previously. So I think, you know, I think if Lydia Ko hadn't have won the Open Championship, um, I would have probably gone with Hamish Kerr, to be honest, over Lydia Ko. I just think, uh, sorry, over... Uh, Lisa Carrington, I just think that what he did, um, yes, yeah, supersedes winning a golden kayaking. But, you know, it's always going to be debatable, isn't it? Uh, and and I think also, too, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, you know, I think um, there's also there's always going to be a reason to tend in our country, probably tend to lean a little bit more to women's athletes. Yeah, look, it's 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 six of one, half dozen of the other in a lot of ways, excepting the fact that, you know, when Lydia Ko uh, won a gold medal and that's the only event that, that she was actually in, so therefore you balance that up against Lisa Carrington who had three gold medals, then to, two weeks later, that's what gets me, Mark, more than anything, it's peaking and then it's peaking and it's not just winning any old golf tournament, it's winning the women's major championship so I'm kind of leaning towards her because of that. If it was just gold medal versus gold medal and then Hamish Kerr's in the mix, I'd say, but I actually think Lydia Coe's now got the neck in front. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Lydia Coe's lucky for the fact that there's five major championships on offer in a calendar year, so she gets five opportunities to add to that Olympic Games gold. As we say, Carrington, she only gets that one week, that one window every four years to do what she's done. Uh um, but yeah, I just think there's probably a lot more depth in women's golf than there probably is in women's kayaking. And therefore, yeah, I mean, it's quite extraordinary. And so, yeah, Lydia Ko to me. Apologise to me! Will you be watching the All Blacks versus the Box, mate? Do you get a chance to watch it? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, I've got to just check my schedule. Um, I was just talking to a couple of the English commentators who are mad on their rugby and saying, hey, look, this is on. Let's see if we can watch it. Let's see if we can go somewhere to see it because I think it comes on in the afternoon over here. Oh, look, I'll be watching it. I don't have a lot of expectations. I still don't think the All Blacks will win. Um, I don't think we've spoken since Leon McDonald was basically stood, stood down or parted ways. I, 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 to be honest, mate, I, I don't think Leon McDonald was the right guy to be in there anyway. I just never had the right feeling about Leon McDonald. To me, he just hadn't done enough. Um, and I think he was showing up by Vern Cotter this year with the Blues, possibly just how deficient he is as a coach. Uh, my only concern I have, I guess, with the coaching setup, and I'm digressing from the original questions, I just hope we don't end up becoming just too crusader heavy in everything that we're doing. And it's starting to get that look and feel about it a little bit. And I know you're going to go with people you trust, but it's not the Crusaders. This is the All Blacks. And, 
Um, I, you know, uh, I said this last week, I've been disappointed with Scott Robertson in terms of his selections and um, hopefully this Leon McDonald in parting ways shows that, you know, he is in control. He is taking charge of this team. He's realising that the responsibility does fall on him. But look, it's one less voice, isn't it? Even though Tamati Ellison's sort of coming in. I, I just, I, I don't know. I just cannot see them beating South Africa. And, you know, I, I'm hoping I'm wrong. I genuinely hope I'm wrong. Um, you know, what gives me just a little bit of hope is, well, this team's not a lot different than the team that we played in the World Cup. And, you know, we probably should have beaten them. We didn't. And saying that, we don't have Brody Retallick. We don't have Sam Whitelock anymore. And we've had a few other players move on. So certainly be watching it. Will I be watching it optimistically? Probably not. Um, I just hope the damage is not too much, Martin. Devlin. That is a disgusting act. The Platform.